Hi, if you're watching this video, you probably want to learn more about your Squarespace website header. That's the part of your website that appears at the top of every page. It's typically where you find the site title, your logo, your navigation, and sometimes some other elements as well. In this video, I'll walk you through how to turn off and on all those elements, as well as how to lay out your Squarespace website with all the options available to you. My name is Christy Price, and I'm a Squarespace Circle member and authorized trainer, and I'm excited to help you make the most of your Squarespace website. If you find this video helpful, please like and subscribe. All right, let's dive in. So to get started, I'll hit edit here. And you can see that when I roll over this area, it highlights it, this white part at the top, and I can click to edit the site header. Now we have um, the site title and logo. We've got navigation and then a button that says edit design and a button that says add elements. Let's go ahead and take a look at the add elements. So click on that. And this is where you can turn on or off elements that appear in the header. The button, we can turn that on and it will put a default button here for us. We'll be able to adjust all the spacing there later. Social links are on, but you don't see them here. And that's because I haven't added the links yet. I'll show you where to do that shortly. We can toggle on or off the cart icon. When it's on, you can also style what it looks like. On or off account. We have that toggled on automatically, but I'm not selling anything on this website, so I'm going to toggle it off. There's also a language switch. So if you are setting up a multilingual website, you can toggle on the language switch there. But for this walkthrough, we will look at just the button and social links because those are the two that most people use. All right, we have our elements turned on. Again, we're not seeing the social links. They're here, just hidden. And the next thing I wanna do is go ahead and edit some social links to get those to show up on the website. So let's go ahead and add those in. So I'll click add a social link and just paste in the link to my Instagram. Let's go ahead and add YouTube as well here. There we go. We've got some social links now and we have our button. So let's go ahead and set up our button. Here we click on it, click the pencil icon and it says get started, but you can have the say anything like get a quote, um, contact me. Let's do contact and we'll remove contact from this area here. We can also remove home from here because people know to click the site title or logo to go home. All right, and let's go ahead and attach a link to the contact page. If you start with a slash and start typing, it will appear here, and then you click off and it puts it here. Great, all right, so we have our elements all in place. What if we want to swap out the site title for a logo? Let's do that first. I'll click here, click the pencil icon, and you can see I've, I have my site title written here. You can edit this as needed, and then you can add a logo. So I have um, my circle member logo handy here, so I'll just drop that in. So you can see it adds it here. It's really small though, it's hard to see. This is where you can adjust that logo height to make it large enough to be legible. I'll caution you, there's a tendency, if you love your logo, to make it a little big. So try not to err on the side of too large. When your logo is really big, it just makes this header area larger. You can see as I adjust the size of the logo, the header just gets bigger and bigger. So we want it to be legible and feel appropriate for the space without making the header too large. Now we can also size it for mobile. So if I click mobile view here, we can go back to our site title and logo, click edit, and this is where we will resize the mobile logo as well. You have the option here of dropping in an entirely different mobile logo image if you would like. If you have one that you feel looks better on mobile, go for it. But I'm going to use just the one for both places. All right, let's hop back to our desktop view. It's a little easier for me to work here. And we've added our elements. We've added our logo. We've set up our social links and our button. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can do with the design. If I click here, we have two tabs. We have design and color. 
let's go ahead and start with color. So from the drop down here, you have a few different options. You've got solid, gradient, and you also have adaptive. So these work very differently. Adaptive uses the theme of the first section on each page. So whatever color theme you're using for your first section, adaptive will use that as well. So it matches the first section on your website on every page. If we go back to gradient, you can see how that works here. You can choose a background color and a nav color, choose the opacity of the gradient. So for example, if I wanted this to start here instead of with white, you can see how that changes. I wouldn't go too far out of your palette here, but you can add custom colors and you can change the opacity. So we could go lighter, darker, more opaque, less opaque which messes with the whole opacity as well. So you can see that here. We can make it completely zero, or we can make the opacity 100%, and then you can really see that gradient. The other option we have here is to blur the background. So if you toggle that on, you'll see it blurs out what's behind it. You can also choose the blur amount. But for almost every website I work on, I just stick with solid. I keep it simple. So we have two options here for solid. We have theme and we can just click and it will go to the color theme that we've already set in our color style. So you can choose this and it will be the same on every page of your website. Or if you go to color, you can choose the background color yourself, the navigation color, the opacity, Again, can have the background show through a bit or not at all. And we also have the option to blur the background here, just like we did on our gradient option. But I like a minimal modern look, so I'm going to keep opacity at 100. I'm going to go into theme, stick with my lightest one, so any updates I make there will be reflected here on my website. And that's it for the color. So let's tap back over to design and take a look there. The first thing that we can do is change the layout of this section. So if we wanted, we could move the nav over aligned with the logo rather than being aligned right at the aligned left. We can also put the nav centered. Now, this is a really nice looking option, but you can see if you have too many elements here, it will stack. Next up, we have logo centered buttons and elements on the right, navigation on the left. And here we have some elements on the right, some elements on the left, and the logo stacked over the navigation. So you'll notice that there are some other options here as well under effects and sizing. So let's go back to our original layout Again, this is kind of the gold standard of web design. This is the one we see most. So I'm going to stick with that. I don't want to make it any harder than it needs to be for people to figure out how to use my website. So for link spacing, I feel like our links are spaced pretty nicely here, but I could move them farther apart or closer together. Don't do that. Give them some breathing room and make them look like discrete choices. So I'm going to go to about 1.8. And element spacing is the space between the button and the social links, those kinds of things. So I can spread that out and it will create more space between these items and these elements and the navigation, or you can bring it back in. We can also add effects. So we can add a drop shadow. And I'm going to put it on strong here. You can see it shadows over the first section of our website. And that might be a little hard to see. You can see the difference between the white and the black here. So if you wanted a drop shadow that bleeds into your first section, you could certainly do that. You can make it soft or strong. Or you can control these yourself exactly. So strong is a preset. Soft is a preset or you can choose the distance spread and blur on your own. Do I ever use drop shadows? No, I feel like they're kind of outdated right now. I'm sure they'll be back in one day, but right now I choose not to use them. 
Our other option is a border option. So you can see that I've added a border here. Let me make this a different color so we can see it a little more clearly. Um, I'm going to go with this pink tone. And you can make it small. Can't really see it when it's small up against an image or a background color. But if we make it large, you can see it standing above here. And we also can make our header boxed in. I don't love this look. Top and bottom, top only, which I think can be very stylish, or bottom only. So if you want your header to stand out from what's below it on every section, that's a great option as well. So I do use this occasionally. I use it typically for either top or bottom. And if it's bottom, I keep the thickness sm small. If it's top, I like a slightly thicker line because it shows off that color that I want to display on the website. Let's look at our next option here is fixed position. Now, what does that mean? So you can create a fixed header, which means that as you scroll on your website, the header will stay there. So let's do basic and I'll click off here. Now, when I scroll on my website, the header stays put. That's basic. Let's go back in, edit site header, edit design. Instead of fixed position, basic header style, I'm going to change it to scroll back. Save that, let's exit. I'll show you how that works. So now when I start to scroll, the header disappears. But if I get farther down the website and I scroll back up, the header will re reappear and then I can jump to another page really easily. If your site is pretty short and simple, I think it's a good idea to keep this turned off. But if you have a longer site, that fixed position header can be really helpful to your users. All right, next up, we can change the height of this header. Now, it will always depend on the height of your logo, but with that logo set, you can choose the height to grow or shrink around your logo. So this is a height of one view width. It's way too tight. This is 10 view widths. That's really, really tall for a header, and you're using up a lot of usable website space. So I find the sweet spot is usually somewhere between 2.5 and three. Feel it out, see how it feels on your website with your design, and make a judgment from there. And finally, under design, we have a width of full or inset. I'm going to shrink what is showing in my browser. And if I hit inset, you'll see that the header content stays where it was. So it doesn't matter how wide my site is, how large the device I'm viewing it on, it's going to keep inset based on the rules of spacing that I gave my website. If you choose full, it's going to always go to the outer bounds that you've given it when you set up your website. This really depends on your design style. I typically leave it as full, and you may not even notice it most of the time if you're working on a laptop or if you keep your browser windows a normal size on your desktop. It's not a huge difference that you'll typically see, but it is an option for design. Now we've walked through everything that we can do with our header except for our navigation. So let me save and exit out of here. We have looked at our elements. We've looked at the design of the header, but our navigation lives here in the header. How do we change that? Because we need to get rid of home because as we talked about earlier, people can click this logo to go home so that we don't need it to say home here. And then we need to remove contact as well because they can click the button to contact me. We do that if we go into websites here. And when we go into website at the top, you'll see pages. And the first section of pages is main navigation. That is everything you see here. We have not linked pages as well. Those are pages that are live on your site. They just don't live in your main navigation. So what we need to do to move home out of the main navigation is drag it to not linked and same with contact. Now that we have cleaned that up, I'm going to go back and I'm going to make one more change. I think with this smaller number of navigation items, I would actually prefer to have my layout be the one with the centered navigation here. 
So let me click exit. And that looks really fantastic. I'm happy with my header. I see that there is still a bit of a drop shadow here. I'm going to go ahead and remove that as well. Left it lingering somewhere. Yep. Remove that drop shadow. There we go. Save and exit. And you know what? I'm feeling minimalist. I'm going to go in and remove this top bar here as well. Edit the design. I'm going to go into effects border and remove my border as well. All right, now we have a beautiful, clean, easy to use navigation and header. This will be at the top of every page of your website. If you're interested in learning more about my Sway template, I'll drop a link to that below. It is a premium Squarespace template that you can buy. It gives you a great starting point for your website. You can just switch out the text and images and launch your site in a weekend. Thanks for watching. I wish you best of luck with your website. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe.